I'm going to talk to y'all for a minute. Can I talk to y'all for a minute? I think I'm going to talk to you for a minute. So I mentioned I was going to do this video earlier this week. But uh, I think yesterday, which shit happens, and I couldn't uh, get it done because I was doing everything else. But the name of this video is going to be Marvel vs. Capcom F. No X-Men is a good thing. Now I know a lot of people are going to get up in arms, like, how is no X-Men being in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite a good thing? Like, what do you mean by that? Well, if you listen, I'll tell you. So, you know, this whole Versus series with Capcom actually started off with the X-Men. Literally titled X-Men vs. Street Fighter. So, they were kind of introduced as characters who, from all purposes and all angles, looked like they were going to be a mainstay in future Versus games to come. But due to licensing issues and, you know, Disney not wanting to get that shit up. So, you know, m m the X-Men had to sit out of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Now, you have to understand that I'm speaking from two different realms of common sense here. And I know some of y'all may think of two different realms of common sense. It's only one realm of common sense. It's just common sense. Do what's right, you know. But... And I'm doing this while I'm walking home, so if you hear me breathing heavy, I just got off work, I'm walking home, yeah, I'm kind of out of energy. But I'm sipping the Powerade, trying to maintain, so bear with me. Man, I sound like a fatty. <laughs> just exhausted, y'all, so forgive me, but... You know, when I used to do Yu-Gi-Oh! content on this channel, I kind of spoke about this in the same way, when it referred to that game, but... The same can be applied to any fighting game... Or any game that has a competitive scene, such as Marvel vs. Capcom series, such as the Marvel vs. Capcom series. Um, you have two different realms of common sense. You have the common sense of business, and then you have the common sense of competition. And not all the times will those two worlds of common sense uh, collide with each other. Sometimes they work together, sometimes they don't. And this is one of those cases, I believe, for the sake of competition, in, in many ways, for the sake of business, it is a good thing that the X-Men weren't in there. I mean, let's think about it. Since the very first, well, I'm not going to say since the first, because I, I wasn't around since the first, but since Marvel vs. Capcom, what, 2? Because I know definitely it was happening too. Well, what I'm going to talk about. Since the, since the big tournaments in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, all the way down to the tail end of that game, in the tournament scene, how many times have we seen the same four characters over and over? You know what I mean? Like, let's really think about that. You know that variety is the spice of life. We all know that. And we know that if you see the same thing over and over again, eventually more people are going to use that strategy because they feel like, oh, if it worked for him, it worked for me. And this is the mentality in the fighting game community right now, which is why it sucks so damn bad. I mean, for the people making money with it, I'm pretty sure it's good for them. But for the viewer, which is pretty much the perspective I'm speaking from, as well as the same mentality I go into when I'm playing these games, it's like... You know, you get tired of seeing the same thing over and over again. And I've been dealing with this, and I know many of y'all have been dealing with this in video games and various fighting games with a competitive scene for so many years that even when a new game comes out, you already know what you're going to see more of than a, than the other character. And you already get tired of it as soon as you see it. So <laughs> it gets boring real fast nowadays. And in the case of Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which is the point I'm trying to get to, um, X-Men characters being a mainstay, you've seen the same thing. Like, how many times, I mean, besides outside of Justin Wong, maybe, and a few other people in these tournaments, how many times have you seen Sentinel, Cable, Magneto, Storm, next tournament, Sentinel, Cable, Magneto, Storm, more so Sentinel, Magneto, and Storm than others, but every now and then they throw Cable in there. But how many times have you seen it? To the point where it felt like that was the only three characters in the damn game. You couldn't even take Cable out the equation. 
like, outside of Justin Long, who was using, like, Wolverine and Akuma, and I don't know who else he was using. I think he was one of the, using one of the four gods, as he used to call them. Cable, Magneto, Storm, and the Sentinel. Um, but outside of that, I think Justin Long was the only person and a few other people who weren't using those four with that much consistency as other people were. It's, it got born real quick. And then that same mentality carried over years that later after, uh, let me see, because Marvel vs. Capcom 3 came out in what, 2000, let me say, what, I want to say 2015? Or, or maybe it was it 2014? I don't know. I, like somebody correct me on that. I'm on my phone right now and I'm recording, so I can't, you know, look up on Wikipedia and see when. But I think that it was released like four years ago, right? And then they got the Ultimate Edition. But nevertheless, that bullshit. But um, but yeah, it was like the same shit. And I'm not talking about the broken mechanics in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, because Lord knows if <laughs> there's a fighting game where you can do one counter hit and do 100% damage and kill somebody, I mean, that's that's not a good game. It's good to view, but it's not good to play. It's not good to be on the receiving end of something when you can't defend yourself, when you're literally helpless. Like, you might as well just put the joystick down and not even do anything else, you know? <laughs> Only thing you can sit there and hope for is if a person messes up or use your X Factor, which is like mainly one of one of like your only ticket out of there. Um, out of that loop with the with that. But even then you might still you'll get caught. Because there's no guarantee. Should be crazy. But yeah, you still see the same thing in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. You know, Sentinel, Magneto. Oh, you might as well add Dr. Doom to that. I forgot about Dr. Doom. Even though he wasn't one of the four guys, you damn near might as well need to add him in that bunch. Make it five guys, because people was using Doctor Doom like a motherfucker in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. <laughs> and I gotta be honest, even though he's not an X-Men, you know, like he's part of that. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't consider him to be like an X-Man. You know, because in all honesty, he's not. You know, like he's a part of the Fantastic Four. So he's, you know, like a part of that Fantastic Four universe. But but still, like you can throw Doctor Doom in there, but this is about the X-Men though. You know, you got, you, you got tired of seeing the same thing over and over again. So much to the point that when Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite was announced and the full roster got announced and you didn't see the full... And you didn't see the X-Men on that full roster. Uh, and I mean, even as the DLC characters, you didn't see them. It was almost like they were forced to give us a breath of fresh air due to the licensing situation. And now that you're playing it, it's almost good that they don't have a, a, a Storm, Magneto, Sentinel, K, you know what I'm saying? They don't have the standard characters that were plaguing the game for so damn long and you just got tired of seeing. Because, let's be honest, if you would have seen those, those four characters in this game, or more so Magneto, Storm, and Sentinel than Cable, but still, if you would have seen those four characters in the game, what would have been your response? Same old bullshit. Same old Sentinel armoring through everything. Same old quick ass broken Magneto Storm fucking combo loops. You know what I mean? It, was, it would have just been the same shit. And that's never a good thing when it's the same thing over and over again. You know? So, it's a point. I know other people are going to have their opinions about it. Um... You know, but I know what I'm saying holds merit. And a lot of people may not like what I say, but you can't argue that I'm proving a point here. I'm making a good point. I'm making a good argument, and fuck it, let's debate. If y'all want to, you know, say I'm stupid for saying that, I mean, hey, for the sake of competition, I think it's a good thing. You know, and for the sake of business as well, because you're adding something fresh, even though they kind of made, you know, nemesis like, um, even though they kind of made Nemesis like the new Sentinel, because he has the armor and all of that, it's just like they're giving you something new. Now, I, I didn't play Marvel vs. Capcom 3, so I don't really know. I don't know if they, uh, 
if they gave Nemesis armor in that game. But I do know that it's not the same old four characters dominating the scene. To the point where you forgot that there was other characters in the game. That's bad. And going and another point with Marvel vs. Capcom 2, there was 52 characters in that game. With the way people were playing Magneto, Sentinel, and Storm, and Cable, but again, more so Magneto, Storm, and Sentinel, you forgot that there were other people on the damn Marvel side. <laughs> and y'all know I'm telling the truth. They were using them so much that you literally forgot that there were other people on the Marvel side of the game. That's how often they were being used. Every so often, again, Justin Wong and maybe whoever else was trying to ride his dick and try to copy his strategies with, you know, Akuma and Wolverine and shit. And I forgot who his third was. I don't, I don't remember, but I know he used to do good with Akuma and Wolverine real good. I, I want to say maybe Chung Lee. Because I know he got a good Chung Lee. But, um... But yeah, it was just the same shit over and over again. And... I'm glad they didn't put the X-Men in. Even though I know they probably wanted to, I'm glad shit turned out to where they didn't put the X-Men in the game. Or, where, or rather, they couldn't, but still, I'm glad they're not in there. Because it does give the game a new sense of... A, a new breath of life when there's some different shit. <laughs> new strategies, not the same old shit from the past, what, two games. You know, not the same boring-ass shit that, that was present in the past two games with the same characters. You know what I'm saying? You get to do some new shit with some new characters. You know what I mean? Like, enjoy. Like, we got Jetta in a fucking Marvel vs. Capcom game. Finally, Morgan isn't the only dog stalker in there. Kind of wish they would have put Dimitri in this shit, but I guess they got enough Shotos uh, in this game as it is, because the game basically runs on the damn Shoto system anyway, so... Uh, but yeah, man, it's... It's really one of those things where, you know, it's a good thing. For the sake of competition, it's a good thing. You know, for the sake of sales, I'm pretty sure people would have went crazy. So that part of the business, I can understand. Again, I know they wanted to put the, the X-Men characters in there. It's kind of stupid not to, considering that they've been in, you know, it started with them. You know what I mean? It started with X-Men in, in Street Fighter. This whole versus phenomenon started with X-Men in Street Fighter. Two universes that you would never think clashing in one game, that started a lot of shit, a lot of good shit. But over time, when the same things keep happening, it gets boring. So I think it's a good thing. You know, you guys tell me what y'all think. I'm out of here. And, uh, I'll see you guys for more gameplay. ADS Play 101. Peace.